Hi, I'm Kay Bell. I'd like to talk about fossilization in second language acquisition. Fossilization in language acquisition has been described as a broad term, including individuals whose second language acquisition has ceased from improvement. Sokolai added that fossilization was a learning plateau where L2 learners' progress was halted. Saville Choi commented that it was a stable state in second language acquisition where learners seize their interlanguage development before they reach target norms despite continuing L2 input and passage of time. Sokola stated that when fossilization exists, comprehensive learning has stopped because the learner has ceased acquiring the L2. For the ESL instructor, the onset of fossilization should be feared. Student learning will cease and the possibility of future progress is doubtful. This is a condition which must be monitored for its existence and if found, every means possible must be explored to resist its becoming permanent in the L2 learner. The duty of every L2 instructor is to help the students acquire their L2, so anything that threatens this goal should be identified and resisted. Having identified that the phenomenon of fossilization exists, the question arises as to what is its origin. Lennerberg initially theorized that each individual is born with a physical structure in the brain which enables them to learn language. This construct is the physical form of Chomsky's universal grammar. While it was considered dormant, if the individual activated, proficiency in L2 would be achieved. However, if the individual did not stimulate this part of the brain, Selinker theorized there was a latent psychological structure which would then be activated and fossilization will be the result. Given the previous material, a natural question would be to ask, what causes a person to fossilize? Saville Troig stated that the exact reasons were unclear. However, there was some indication that age, social identity, and communicative need were significant factors. Specifically, it was suggested that younger L2 learners are less likely to fossilize than older L2 students. Creo stated that some of the primary problems causing the onset of fossilization are when language is not properly transferred from the native speaker to the L2 learner, when grammatical and speaking rules are not properly taught, when the L2 learner adopts a failing strategy to learn the target language, when there is a failure to properly transfer the L2 to the student, this would be especially true in the area of simplification. When the instructor improperly applies the target language to the student. Chomsky's universal grammar is considered a significant factor in second language acquisition. However, it is unclear when fossilization is more likely to take place in L2 learners during full, partial, or indirect access to universal grammar. To have no access to universal grammar would guarantee fossilization. Applying to full access, learners would have total access of their universal grammar as a guide or method to learn L2. In partial access, the learner would retain a portion of their universal grammar as they are acquiring their L2, but not all of it. Indirect access is similar to partial access, where the universal grammar is partially accessible to the student. Finally, no access position is where the universal grammar is blacked out of the learning process of the L2. 
Ota stated that L2 teachers must be careful in providing their students with appropriate lessons, which are not too easy nor too difficult. Should the lesson be too far ahead or behind the student's current level, learning will stop and the onset of fossilization may start. This state of inappropriate lessons will be related to Vygotsky's graduated acquisition of language, where the interaction of a skilled teacher and a student would follow a predetermined progression of language acquisition. Finally, possibly the most significant factor that causes fossilization to occur is a lack of motivation in the L2 learner. Creo believes that many L2 learners often reach a point where their level of second language acquisition is adequate for their purposes of communication and their needs are satisfied. In these situations, the L2 learner often loses the motivation to put in the time to continue their studies just to see minimal gains. The individual's purpose to study a second language has been met and their motivation to continue is low. At this point, fossilization will set in and learning will stop. To decrease the chance of becoming fossilized, researchers have suggested that the student must be enthusiastic and highly motivated towards second language acquisition. Students who are not properly ready to invest the proper time and attention needed to second language acquisition are inclined to failure. One of the factors that facilitates the onset of fossilization is a L2 teacher who demotivates, depresses, and frustrates his or her students through poor teaching and verbal humiliation. Sokola emphasized that L2 teachers must identify the corrections needed for L2 acquisition, but to do so in a tactful and respectful manner. The honor and value of the student must not be challenged by the teacher when mistakes are made. Threatening the individual's character will demotivate the learner and encourage them to cease learning. Instead, teachers should find the positive gains and emphasize those. Gartner developed nine methods to stop the onset of fossilization among L2 learners. First, instructors should use memorization techniques of short, easily understood phrases during lessons. These phrases should be common statements which the learner will find useful in their normal L2 conversations. The short phrases are easily memorized and eventually motivate the students to continue learning more. Secondly, Gardner suggested that ESL teachers should use large print bilingual books during classroom lessons. The book should have the two languages side by side so students can easily see the vocabulary and grammar used between L1 and L2. Thirdly, ESL teachers should employ the use of grammar charts, which can be used in group and one-on-one -on -one settings to remind students of grammar rules, vocabulary, rules of exceptions, etc. These charts should include inviting colors, which will encourage L2 learners to refer to the chart. Fourthly, students who are becoming fossilized desperately want one-on-one -on -one assistance. This instruction can come in the form of the student interacting with a teacher or a native speaker. Regardless, this activity will motivate L2 learner. Fifth, the instructor should decorate their classroom with the colors of the target language. These colors are thought to increase learning as the student becomes more involved with the target culture. Combining these colors with familiar structures in the target culture also help. Sixth, ask the L2 students to keep journals where they express their victories, frustrations, observations, and experience learning another language. Encourage students to review their entries and take note of any growth they may see in their speaking ability. Seventh, 
Many ELTA teachers tend to solve all the problems for their students. However, this will prove counterproductive to learning. ELTA teachers should encourage students to identify their real problem and then explore options to find a solution. This activity generates creative thinking and empowers the learner when a problem has been solved through their actions. Next, L2 teachers need to create lesson plans that include phrases and vocabulary in real situations the learner will find themselves. When the learner can communicate with a native speaker and a problem is resolved, there is a sense of pride and success which fills the person. Lastly, L2 instructors should combine images with their vocabulary to facilitate learning. It has been stated for many years that a picture is worth 8,000 words. This can be especially true for the L2 learner. Included in the visual instruction materials should be pictures of different scenarios people may find themselves and then ask the students to describe the probable conversation. While these ideas can help a L2 student, all of them won't make an impact. Therefore, instructors of L2 should be prepared to use various methods to reach every student. L2 proficiency is going to depend on a number of factors and the instructor is the one who will orchestrate the proper learning environment for each student. The task is great. The L2 instructor's job will never become stagnant.